Hey people, how's it going? Welcome to another video. Welcome to another Big Four debut album ranking. Today is a goddamn interesting one. So we're doing a genre that was never really my thing. Like, yes, I like the odd one or two songs, but never really gave it a chance. However, being surrounded by some certain people at work who often, you know, give this genre quite a bit of praise. I thought, you know what's needed? I need to get into this and see if it's actually worth the hype. Today, we're doing the top, well, today we're doing the big four new metal debut bands. So we're going to do Korn's debut. We're going to do Linkin Park's Hybrid Theory. We're going to do, what's the other one? Um, we're going to do Limp Biscuits $3 bill, y'all. I think it's cool. And we're going to do System of a Down's self-titled debut. So it's an interesting collection. This is the internet's opinion on the big four of new metal. So that's what we're going off. Um, I put up a poll both on Insta and on YouTube asking the public, what is your favorite new metal debut band? And a few of you, um, yeah, it was quite interesting. A lot of you like Corn. a lot of you also like Lincoln. No one likes Limp Biscuit, funny enough. So it'll be interesting to see where I've put that one. But yeah, um, if you partook in the poll, if you haven't partaken in the poll, please let me know down below what order you put these four albums in. I'm super excited. It's a genre that I don't normally dwell into and holy God, it's an, at least coming off these albums, it's an angry genre. Are you guys all good? You, the, the new metal, you know, fan base, I, you know, if, if you ever need anyone to talk to about your bullying or your, you know, just any struggles in life, please hit me up. I, you know. I'm new to the genre, so yeah. Um, it was great fun, I won't lie. Um, I've developed a favourite, obviously, that we'll get to in a moment. But yeah, I'm super excited to get into this one. So like I said, let me know down below. But without further ado, let's just, great it. Get, let's just get straight into this album countdown with number four. So it might come as no surprise that, yes, I am the same as the poll. Number four is Limp Biscuit's debut, $3 bill, y'all. Um... <laughs> Kiwis, Australians, and British people don't say y'all, so that's why that sounds funny when I say it. Um, yeah, when I decided to do this, obviously I was like, cool, Limp Biscuit. Um, they sort of not developed a next uh, new generation fan base, but a lot of people would have jumped on board to see who they are after the Woodstock 99 doco that came out last year, year before. Um, fantastic doco, but absolutely really gave us a whole new perspective on, you know, why the Limp Biscuit performance at that gig was so iconic and infamous today. So it's interesting to see, you know, none of those songs other than other than one that we'll talk about is on this album. All the big Limp Biscuit songs aren't on this album. So when I was going through the track listing, I was like, I know literally none of these other than the iconic cover of George Michael's Faith, um, which is weirdly uh, weirdly regarded as a good cover. I don't know. Yeah, Limp Biscuit is number four because it's just Limp Biscuit. Take the meme away. Take the joke of what limp are and this is genuinely not a good album <laughs> um it's aggressive it's very in your face which obviously is what they're going for that's the thing and as a youth growing up in the generation area of when this album came out in 1997 in america you know that whole area of angry teenager, it was probably amazing. Songs like Pollution are, is great. Counterfeit was pretty fun. It's a song about all the fake Limp Biscuit copy bands, apparently. Uh, Pollution is about um, uh, the uh, non-fans of Limp saying they make pollution, like noise pollution, whatever. Uh, Stuck, that's a funny song. Um, the the melodies that, that Fred Durst s sings rather than shouts in this album is pretty hilarious. Like Stuck, for example, has that really ridiculous, you're stuck and you don't even know. And it's just like, oh God, that's whiny. And it's just, yeah. Nobody Loves Me is a loud, aggressive song. Sour was quite cool, but after that, everything else just kind of sucked. Yes, Faith is on this album, and I knew that just because of the cover from, uh, sorry, because of the performance of Woodstock 99, and that performance in itself is just crazy. And the studio album, the, it's the studio version is no different. Uh, this album has a 16 minute album closer called Everything, which is a jam sesh, and it's just really not needed at all. Um, yeah, I added Counterfeit and Stuck to my 
to my um, playlist. But other than that, I'm never listening to this album again. <laughs> so yeah, number four, Limp Biscuit, $3 bill, y'all. Coming in at number three is System's debut, um, the self-titled System of a Down. This one came out in 1998 on the 30th of June. Um, I'm I'm a casual System of a Down fan. I've seen them live. Well, well, I half saw them live, actually. We left the festival to go watch another. We went to a gig a few years ago, about a decade ago, me and a mate, and... Um, System were headlining on one stage and Lamb of God were headlining on another stage. So we cut each set in half to go watch the other band. Anyway, um, this, like I say, I'm not the biggest System listener, you know. Um, and I was, pff, this album is just weird. You know, it's really like, it really is a wild card for basically metal music as a whole. Because it's like, it's like if progressive took steroids and just forgot all rules of how music is structured you know what i mean and some people love that but me not so much you know systems debut is only slightly better than limps is because it is more musical you know limps is just a bunch of noise put together i uh, know noise pollution but like sugar comes from this album as does spiders and those songs are great you know sugar and the spiders is fun as well. It's like the pre-game to aerials, more or less. But there are then there are some other weird ones that just are just odd, like soil. Soil's a fun song. It has a pretty chaotic ending, but it's cool. Um, but yeah, it's a really mashed for me. It's a mashed together album, and I imagine that like the diehards must love it. But it's not one of them. But it's just, it's still, it's not my favorite. Obviously, excuse me. And it's better than Limp because it's a lot more musical. But like, yeah, it's um, it's not my favourite, as I just said. Although I'm just reading here. This album is featured in the book A Thousand and One Albums You Must Hear Before You Die. So I've heard it, so I can cross that off. And apparently Loudwire put it as at number 22 for the best metal debut. So interesting. But yeah, um, if you're a System fan, obviously you'll probably love it. But yeah, for me, not so much. Sorry about that. Um, it's okay. But yeah, I would much rather listen to other System albums rather than this one. So yeah, number three is System of a Down. Number two is Hybrid Theory. Um, yeah, from Linkin Park. This album came out in the year 2000, October 24. So it's uh, nearly 25 years old now. Um, when I was growing up and getting into metal music and stuff, I was, how old was I? I was seven when this album came out. So I wasn't listening to metal at all. So, you know, and I often forget that Linkin Park get thrown into this whole new metal category because to me, they are just, a you know, like a heavier rock group, do you know? Do you know what I mean? Like a heavier. Th there's so much. I don't know. There, it's probably because I always associated new metal with, for a better word, um, not the most musical of music. Does that make sense? But then Linkin Park turns up, and they actually have really catchable sing, catchy, singable songs and things like that. So I have to remember that this is where they came from. And as a debut album, Hybrid Theory is pretty damn amazing. If you grew up with it. And, you know, it really helps you through those tough times. It makes perfect sense. Um, hence why the public that reached out during that poll I put up, you know, 98 whatever percent of you, uh, however, however, however many it was, um, put link put this one as their favourite. Um, but it's a bit funny. Like, it's hard to listen to this album today, like, at face value, when you pretty much know half of it already. It's sort of like, is this album still good? even though I've heard in the end countless times, crawling countless times, you know, you have to, it's, you have to really put it, it's a bit like listening to Black Sabbath's Paranoid, I find, is it still a good album, even though we've heard Paranoid and Iron Man so many, so many times, so to hear the deeper cuts of this album, that I won't lie to you, I had never heard, because like I just said, I'm not, I wasn't a big Linkin Park fan at all, you know, songs like Paper Cut, I may have heard once or twice, but it's a great opening song, One Step Closer, that's awesome, I think that might be my favourite song of the album. Maybe. It's close with a, with another one. With You was fun, but yeah, Points of Authority is a great song. I really, really love the chorus in that one. Crawling, you know, we all love it, we all know it. Runaway, that's cool. That's a great song as well. In the end, obviously fantastic. But I really, really did enjoy Pushing Me Away as well. Again, I don't think, going off memory, I don't think I knew that one prior to this ranking. So hearing that was like, this is a cool way to end the album. Um, 
It's not long. None of these albums are long. Well, actually, that's a lie. Um, the Limp Biscuit one was over an hour, but that's because I had a 15 minute track at the end. Uh, this album's 37 minutes, and I think number one's a bit long as well, but yeah. So it's a bit of a mixed bag in terms of length. So yeah, like I say, it's a fantastic album. It's probably got so much levels of nostalgia for so many of us, but thankfully not so much for me because I didn't jam this one so much at all when I was younger. So to hear it all in its entirety, you know, was pretty amazing. So yeah, it's a great album nonetheless. But there is one that's just slightly better. So that means number one is Korn's self-titled album. This album came out on October 11, 1994. I didn't realise how old Korn was. I was reading somewhere, I might have been on the wiki page, I'm not sure. But that this album was sort of like the start of like where the whole angry new metal thing came from. 1994 is golden era of like second wave Norwegian black metal, which I'm so, you know, much more familiar with. But it's just funny to realize that this album came out around the same time in a different part of the world. You know, while Norwegians are burning churches, Americans are writing songs about being bullied. It's quite funny, just a massive juxtaposition. But anyway, number one is Korn's debut. Sorry, I'm just getting the tracks in front of me. Number one is Korn's debut, and I really did not expect it to be number one. I thought it would be Linkin Park's, just because it's probably the most accessible album out of everything I've spoken of about. Um, however, again, like I was saying, the bros that I hang out with at work, you know, talking about Korn and whatnot, I was like, Korn's pretty good, you know, really, you should really try and get into them. And my God, it helps that the debut is a really, really good album. Korn's debut is actually fantastic. Blind is a top tier Korn song and it's the opening song of the opening album. So like, you know you're gonna do good when you have a song like that. Um, it's an angry album, obviously, and it's very, um, it's very, you could say it's very honest in a way, like it's very emotional, it's very heartfelt, but but angry heartfelt, you know what I mean? Um, real quick, a funny thing happened to me the other day. I was listening to my Spotify DJ, um, which I don't do very often because my DJ often gives me stuff that doesn't fit what I want to hear. Um, and he goes, all right, it's time for a vibe. And that vibe is guitar solo. And I was like, oh yeah, that would be mean. Can't wait, maybe some power metal, who knows? Maybe just some classic rock, who knows? And he goes, starting off with corn. And I was like, corn? The notorious new metal band, famous for not having solos. I want to say, don't trust the DJ. He doesn't know what he's talking about. But aside from that, Blind, great song. Ball Tongue, good fun, but not my favorite. Need To, great. Clown, fantastic. Ah, oh, Divine's cool. But the next two are probably my favorite. Faggot is a great song, and I love that they've spelt it like that. Um, it's just the Faggot's just such an angry, fuck you song to bullies. You know, it's really, really great. It's... It's, yeah, I could have used that song 20 years ago, you know, when I was in school. I wasn't bullied to the extent of what it sounds like he was bullied. He sounds like he was bullied a lot, you know, for being different, liking art and wearing... Did he wear eyeliner? I think I read, but yeah. Um, Shoots and Ladders is a great song. That's a song about pretty much taking the mickey... Well, not taking the mickey, but showing the dark truth behind nursery rhymes. Um, you know, like how Ring Around the Rosie is inspired by the plague and London Bridge falling down, everyone dies, you know, kind of vibe. It's good. It's good. Helmet in the Bush is pretty fun. That's about, I think it's about heroin addiction, if I read that rightly. And um, Daddy. <sighs> Daddy is incredibly freaky, but beautiful at the same time. I love Daddy because of its honesty and its confrontingness about abuse as horrible as that topic is and i really really hate the fact that 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 people have to go through with that i unfortunately unfortunately i fortunately haven't had to go through that so obviously i can't relate to songs like that but to be able to write a song like that is just really you know it's just incredible to be able to do it it's a, on the album it's a 17 minute song but daddy is not a 17 minute song it's a it's longer daddy is a long song it's like nine minutes long but then there's some silence and then there's a bonus track called michael and jerry um but yeah daddy's a really confronting way to end the album but it's hauntingly good as well so yeah if you're not familiar with corn's debut i doubt you are I doubt you're not, because it's honestly one of the greatest albums ever. <laughs> so, yeah, um, I've started listening to a bit more Corn since doing this, and I'm super excited to get to hear more. So, yeah, um, I was shocked, 
but I'm so glad that I went ahead and did this. So yeah, number one is corn. There we go, team. Thank you so much for hanging out with me while I sit here and discuss a whole new genre that I've never thought I'd want to associate myself with. New metal is interesting. Will I dwell into it? like more probably not i might you know dwell into some more lincoln just because and obviously i'm going to dwell into some more corn um i might listen to limp biscuit significant other but other than that i've got no interest in going anywhere near and you know same with system as well i'll listen to the famous stuff but yeah it's not my favorite genre but it gives i gave it the time of day so yeah i'm really happy i did that like i said at the start let me know down below what your order of these four albums are and if you're one of these people who really love the System album or the Limp album, let me know why. And I cannot wait to discuss this with you further. Thanks for hanging out with my team while we sit here and discuss new metal. Keep an eye out for the next ranking. I know what genre I'm going to do next. But until that happens, everybody, stay inside, stay safe. Talk to someone if you're feeling down and depressed and angry. It really helps to get stuff out. Um, and I will see you all in the next video. See you later.